Hi, I'm Martin from Printer Potty. What we're going to be showing you in this video is how to replace the waste ink pads on an Epsom XP645. Now this instruction set is going to cover a lot more printer models, including the XP500, none of the other XP500 series, just the 500, and then from the XP600 through to the XP860. Now, I've chosen this particular model because it's white, it's easier for you to see what's going on, but black plastic printer models are designed in exactly the same way. So you will have an XP640, for example, will be a black plastic, um, a 635 will be white. But I've chosen this particular one just because it'll make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. Don't panic, it's pretty much the same printer. First thing you need to do is lift up as if you were going to be replacing the cartridges. Are you going to stay up? No, you're not. What we'll do is stick a screwdriver in here just to hold it and stop it from coming down. What you need in terms of tools, by the way, is a Phillips or crosshead screwdriver like this one here. A magnetic tip will be useful for our reasons we'll explain shortly. Your printer has a strip of plastic just at the top here, which is held down by two screws, one here and one. We need to remove both of those with our crosshead screwdriver. Now, unlike the black plastic versions, these ones have all silver or steel screws. There's no difference. With the black plastic models, you will find that um, any visible areas like this will have a black screw. Any areas that are hidden internally behind panels and things will have a silver screw okay just so as you know when you've got to put it all back together now that we've removed those screws we're going to remove this strip here the way to do that is just literally lift like that and push back and you're open. now that that's removed put it to one side you now have a screw here and then there is also a screw just behind the plate down deep in here. So our other screw is just down there. We need to remove that. And this is where the magnetic tip screwdriver is gonna come in useful. So we need to remove this screw and that one that's recessed. There you go. This is why the magnet's so useful. It helps get you that screw out. Once you've done that, this little bit here has a plastic nipple or a bump that stops this coming straight off. What will help with that is if you have a flathead screwdriver, like this one. Get your flathead behind this part of the panel and just lift that off. Okay, that releases that and then the panel will come forward like that. You don't need to try and get it between the bit here. If you get it towards this end corner and then lift, that will release it like so. And then you just push forward like that and the panel comes off. Pop that to one side and we now have another two screws that we need to work with. Probably at this point, best to just take your paper tray out, remove that, stick it out of the way. And next thing we do is we remove another two screws, one located there and the other one located there. In case you're wondering, on a darker printer, this screw will be black and that screw will be silver. This one, because it's exposed by the paper tray, and that one because it's hidden behind the panel. Once that, those two screws are removed, you just remove this panel by gently sliding it forward and then moving it to one side. This now exposes the first screw for the pad holder itself, the waste pad holder. So we need to remove this one here 
If you had anything inserted here as a wedge to stop the lid falling down, remove that and then close the lid. Okay, if you're at all concerned that it might open up, what you do is just get yourself a little bit of tape like this and tape it so that the lid is going to stay closed like that. Next, what we do is lift our printer up so that it's on its side like so. Now what we do is remove the smaller screw from this section here. As you can see, that's a shorter screw. Once we've done that, we now need to release, and there are, if you can see here, these little lugs or, or nipples, plastic nipples on the pad holder inside, line up with and go into the holes at the front here. Now those will stop the pad holder coming out. So what we need to do is release that by pulling on this section here and levering again with a flathead screwdriver. So you pull this section out here like so, and then you get behind that and you lever like so, so that you can get hold of the pad holder and pull it out like that. Then you're putting this to one side and this is the point you change your pads. What we need to do first and foremost is get all of the pads out of here and into a container like this um, so we can dispose of them. So what I use, tend to use is just a flathead screwdriver or something similar and I just get hold and lever those pads out. Once you get enough of them out, you can then just grab and pull. So now that we've removed the pads from in here, just wipe it round with some kitchen towel like that till it's relatively clean. And then it's time to rebuild your pads. We're now gonna build the pad set so that it can go into here color for the pad holder is irrelevant. I've just chosen white because it's a little bit easier for you to see. Your pad set here is laid out in a way makes it fairly easy for you to be able to build this. As you can see it's got one, two, three, uh, pad four and there's a couple of spare parts at the bottom here. These are just to deal with any variance in the thickness of these pads. If you need them you'll know and you can include them in. In most cases you might need one, very rare that you'll need both but they're there to just basically help bulk out the pads so that they fit nice and snug. So we start with one, then we put on part number two, then we have three part threes, and pad part number four. Right, so that's our pad set like that. There you go. And we just see whether or not that fits in snugly. Now I can tell already that I'm going to need one of my additional parts. As you can see there, it's a nice big gap. So rather than pushing that in, I mean to ferret it out. What I'm going to do is take this apart. I'm going to take one of my spare pad parts, one of these thinner pieces, one of these thinner pieces like this, pop that in the middle, rebuild the pad set again, and pop it in. In this case, I think we could probably do with the extra part. So we're going to put this extra part in. Uh, and this is part number two equivalent. You may have a slightly different one. So what we'll do again, take that apart, slot it in there, build it all together and test it again. Yeah, and this time it's a lot snugger. That'll be much nicer. So here we go. That's not slots in like that. And you end up with a pad part like that. It doesn't need to be massively tidy. That'll do just fine. And that's it. Your pad is now built and will slot absolutely fine into your printer. Now that you've got your pads ready to go in, what you need to do is insert your pad holder into the printer. Getting them back in is quite a bit easier than when you took them out. You don't have to leave or anything here. All you need to do is gently push that back into position, you'll hear it click into place as those two lugs go back into their respective holes. And now what you need to do is just screw your short screw back into position here. Like 
So next you return your printer back to its normal resting position on its base. Now that we've got it back on its base, we can start to replace the screws and panels that we took off earlier. That now secures the pad holder properly. And we have this particular unit here to go back in. Now, getting this back in can be a little bit tricky. What we found is that if you angle the um, part up a little bit like this into here, it makes it a little bit easier and it gets it past any hurdles. So now we need to replace the two screws that we took out earlier. one and this that's the other one now at this point if you tape down your lid like we did you need to remove your tape like so put it to one side and reopen the lid and stick your wedge back in as you did before so that the lid won't come down while you're doing any of this we now need to put this panel back in what you do is you get the lip that's here and slot it into here. Now, before you do that, make sure that this is all lined up. If this is hanging down like that, that's no, no good at all. What you need to do is make sure that it's in position and that you can do this, okay? So now that we've done that, we get this lip into that gap there and slide everything back into position. That will go in like that. And then this will snap back into position over that lug or nipple that we had from earlier okay so that's held pretty well in position okay next we need to do is to reinstall the screw that we had down here and again this is where your magnetic tip screwdriver is going to come in handy one and this is number two and finally we need to replace this strip back into the printer the way to do that is just slide it in like that and then push down okay and then we replace the two last screws. That's one, number two goes there. Remove any wedges or tools that you've used to wedge the lid open and then close the lid like so. And lastly, if you've removed your paper tray like we did, you then reinsert that like so, close it up. And that's it. That's the pads replaced on this XP645. Now, obviously, if you haven't done so already, you now need to reset the waste ink counter on your printer so that the waste ink related error is cleared. And once that's done, you're good to go. If you found this guide useful, please do give us a thumbs up and a like. If you'd be interested in any of our content as it comes out, then do hit the subscribe button as well. Other than that, Thanks very much for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.